Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Talk. I'm here today with Tara Rochelle from Tara Rochelle Photography based down in Los Angeles, California. And I'm super stoked to have her on this episode of Real Talk. Once again, I'm Sean Brown and hosting this episode of Real Talk. Um, so first off, welcome to this episode. Hi, how are you? Good. We're going to try and hold it together for like this next like okay. half hour because Tara and I like whenever we get together, it's always laughing and, and shenanigans. So we're actually going to like hold it together for you guys. So you guys actually take away something from this episode. Um, but I'm going to start off with some rapid fire questions for you. All right, let's do it. So <clears throat> Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Pizza or burgers? Oh, pizza. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Cats or dogs? Oh, snap. Uh, uh, dogs. Even though I have cats. <laughs> oh, Hot weather or cold weather? Cold. TV or movies? Both. Photoshop or Lightroom? Mmm, Lightroom. I like Light Photoshop. And then Canon or Nikon? Canon. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we'll, uh, we will introduce you a little bit. So um, okay. I already mentioned that you're from LA, but give us a little bit of background. You actually started shooting, what, like, quite a while ago now. You've been, careful, Sean, like, careful. Uh, you're an experienced, <laughs> experienced photographer. So give us yeah. a little bit of background about kind of how you got started, how you fell into photography, that sort of thing. Okay, sure. Um, so like Sean briefly mentioned, so yes, I've been shooting a really long time. I actually fell in love with it back in the film days. And especially when I entered high school and we learned darkroom, which is like super old school and totally dating me. But the darkroom where you actually went in and like printed your own pictures, that's kind of when I was hooked on it. Um, so then after that, I ended up going to art school up in Seattle, which is where I'm from. And then a little while after that, I moved to Los Angeles and started my career here, just kind of taking odd jobs, taking anything that would kind of pay that was photography related. And then little by little, just kind of inched my way into the senior market because it's something that wasn't big here, but that was the genre that I really loved. So yeah, even though I started out really slow, shooting a lot of stuff for free, trying with rep programs and just, you know finding girls in the mall that were like, hey, let's do senior pictures. And I'd kind of have to explain what that was and what that meant. Um, so yeah, so now I'm strictly, I would say I'm about 95% seniors. So I don't really shoot anything else um, except for like, you know, a little my seniors or clients that have been with me forever. I will still shoot some other stuff, but it's mostly all senior or like model related. Yeah, yeah. and and kind of going off that, you were really kind of one of the pioneers in in your area specifically. So how did you even like learn about senior photography or grow to educate your client base that this is like something that's yeah. actually happening and you're not just like some yeah. crazy person with a camera? Right. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think I have it to my advantage that I am a mom and I am a woman. So it doesn't look nearly as weird if I went up to a girl and I always would make sure she was with a parent and I would usually talk to the parent first. And that, mind you, that's not how I really got started with the seniors, but just to get a couple of models so I could show kind of that age group, you know, have pictures in that portfolio of that age group, but that was current. Because um, back in Seattle, senior pictures were a big thing, even, you know, 15, 25 years ago, even further back then, like I remember my sister being a senior and I was like, oh, I can't wait till I'm a senior so I can do those cool senior pictures, even though they were studio based and a little bit more generic. Um, but there was still that genre there, but then coming to Los Angeles, nobody had any clue what I was talking about. Um, so after I kind of shot a little bit of everything, kind of going back to what I spoke about earlier, I just, there was stuff that I liked to shoot, but I didn't love it, you know, and I came from art school where I had like a portrait and a fashion background and I wanted to find a way to merge those two. And I definitely feel like in Los Angeles, you know, the other areas as well, but in Los Angeles, you know, the girls are very fashion forward, you know, they do amazing hair and makeup, their clothes are really on point. So I feel like that was a good merge of the two, you know, the closest thing that I could find in the portrait world that I could blend some fashion elements. Um, so educating the clients, it was just a lot of word of mouth. And you know, once I've had a girl that came in that was from out of town, and she asked me if I did senior pictures. And I was like, what? How do you know about that? Nobody does them out here. And she was from a different area. Yep. So I shot hers. And then of course, a friend saw it and another friend saw it. So just little by little, it built from there. And it started out really slow, you know, where I maybe had like, gosh, five to eight seniors a year yeah. for several years. You know, and, you and that's why I didn't business off that either. Like you need to no. have higher then that's why I shot everything, you know, weddings and babies and, you know, celebrity events and anything literally that could pay the bills that was still in the photo genre. And mind you, I also worked at a pro photo lab. So I also had some connections there, you know, to get me into different fields and stuff, but really nobody here was doing senior pictures. 
um, you know, after I started establishing and like realizing senior pictures could be a thing, then of course other people kind of came into my radar and popped up and I was like, Oh, there, you know, there are other people doing this. It just wasn't widely known. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of going off that you actually had like really cool experiences with celebrity weddings and that sort of thing. So yeah. who's like the coolest celebrity that you've ever gotten to photograph or meet? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I've been really blessed. I've had an awesome career as far as that goes. Um, for me personally, I assisted a friend and did um, <laughs> Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. That's like, so yeah. That wasn't like actually like my job, but I mean, it was a wedding that I went to that was amazing that I got to photograph and I worked with him, you know, directly and posed him and directed him and all that kind of stuff, which was kind of surreal. Were you fangirling over it the entire time? Oh my God. If I show you the picture in the front of the studio, like I tried to be cool and like pretty and like go up and take a picture and literally there's all of the Backstreet Boys behind me and I'm like this. <laughs> Like I tried so hard and I just lost it. And my friends were like, but that's so you like that's, it was an authentic moment. Like I couldn't keep it together. even. Um, so that was really cool. But probably the overall experience that really started me in weddings was I got to go with Melissa Joan Hart and ABC and shoot her wedding over in Italy. So overall. Oh, casual. That's, that was, yeah. 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 Just Italy. I, I mean, it was all right. I mean, I was there for two weeks and we photographed all kinds of cool stuff and you know, cooking segments and going out to vineyards and museums. And I mean, that was like the highlight of my wedding career for sure. That's so awesome. Yeah. So kind of going off that, you mentioned that you were like freaking out over the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, or, yeah. I don't even know what band they're in, but Nick Carter. And, um, they're the Backstreet Boys. They're they are Backstreet the band. Boys. Yeah. Hello. So, <laughs> um, so kind of going off that, how do you, you have like a very kind of enthusiastic, outgoing personality to say the least. So do you, how do you like incorporate that into your business? Cause some people yeah. might say they're like, Oh, I can never do that. It might be come across as unprofessional, but yeah. you know, both you and I are very kind of outgoing photographers yeah. in that way. So how do you feel like that's contributed to the senior business? Um, you know what? I think that it's, you know, it's a blessing and I feel like that I can, I have ways that I can kind of reel it in. Like if there's a girl that is just super, super quiet, like I'm not going to go out there and be crazy because it's just going to, I feel like, you know, close her off even more, but you can tell when you're with certain people, just like, you know, me and you, our connection, we can be silly and goofy and we know like our personalities will play off of each other. But then, you know, around other people, you know, you're still going to be yourself, but you might have to tone it down a little bit. But I think being outgoing and talking to the girls and just now that I kind of, you know, am known in the area, they know when they come to me or they even see me on social media, you know, they see me on Snapchat and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so silly and you're so fun. And I know I'm going to go to this shoot and have a great time and you're going to make me look good. And it's not going to be like stiff and upright and rigid and that kind of a photo shoot. And for the girls, I feel like they're a little bit more aware because they kind of do the research, but I feel like when it's the boys, the mom is the one doing the research. So I feel like with boys, it's a little trickier and there's a little bit more of a warm up period because they sure. kind of get to know me because they haven't watched me on social media, you know, per se. Um, but I don't shoot a lot of boys, but usually after they see, you know, even after like five or 10 minutes that I'm not going to make them look, you know, stupid like a total or, yeah. and stupid and like they have to wear a freaking tie and a jacket. You know, one boy came recently and he was totally like, gave off like this cool kind of like rocker vibe and he busts out a suit and a tie and I could just tell he didn't love it. And I, I straight out asked him, like, did you pick this out? And his mom's like, well, I thought he should have it because I've seen your pictures and he's over there like rolling his eyes. And it, it wasn't him. And once I said, you know what, I'd rather capture you rather than you wear a suit and tie that you would never wear. And as soon as I said that, and that he knew he'd wear like his jeans and his wallet chain, and you know, we were going to do pictures with his drums, he totally loosened up. But you know, at first impression, he was like, okay, I need to be perfect and I need to be proper and I need to be this because here's this other, you know, working woman and she's going to be professional. And once, you know, once he realized like, no, this is about you and capturing you and your personality and what you're into. I don't care if you wear a suit or tie. Like if that's not you, why would you wear it? That's like saying, Hey Tara, wear a dress. <laughs> Good luck with that. You know what I mean? So I, I want them to be themselves. Now, mind you, I want to pull them together, make them a little more polished and I don't yeah. want them to look like they rolled out of bed, but I want them to be themselves or, you know, if it's a girl that maybe that's not herself, because I feel like they sometimes want to do the opposite you know, if they're an athlete and they never wear hair and makeup and they never dress up, sometimes they want the opposite of that. Yeah. Or they want to get a little jazzed up. They want to be a little more glam. So it really depends on them and what, what they envision for their session. Cause ultimately, even though I'm shooting it, it's their session. You know, Absolutely. I want to capture something they're going to love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and kind of going off of that too, you are amazing at styling. Yeah, um, yeah you're welcome. <laughs> and so one of those things is like, you do have to 
obviously you want to put your own flair on the session because yeah. that's that's your brand that's your style yeah. photography but at the same time you also want to bring out their own personality so kind of mm -hmm. like what are you educating them along the way to yeah. kind of push them towards one direction or another or are you just like bring whatever we'll kind of figure it out along the way um, a little bit of both. I definitely give them suggestions. And I think, you know, social media, Instagram, blogs even, that really helps kind of guide them for styling. So I feel like some of the work is already done for me because they'll see what other girls have worn or, you know, things like that. Or, I mean, Pinterest, they'll yeah. go there and it might not be something that I photograph, but they'll show me pictures and say, hey, this is kind of my inspiration. You know, can you find a location that's going to work with this particular outfit? Things like that. Um, and I do tell them to bring a lot and to bring extra you know, especially things that people don't necessarily think about, which seems to a photographer to be common sense. You know, if they bring a black jumper and they bring a black t-shirt and they bring a black dress and they all have, you know, say spaghetti straps or something, you know, like what I have on, well, from the waist up, it's going to look like the same outfit, even though technically it's three outfits. So I definitely have them bring extra so that I can pull different pieces to give them the most variety. And, you know, it doesn't always work, you know, and let's be honest, not everybody's going to have killer style or have a lot of stuff to pull from that you can make really cool outfits, but most of the girls are pretty educated and have planned for this and, you know, are into it and put a little thought into it, which is very helpful. Yeah. And I think that's something that we all kind of hopefully do as photographers where it's like, yeah. I all get the same thing where it's like all like say white top yeah. and yeah. maybe they're a little bit different and they have a little mm -hmm. bit like one's a little bit more lacy and one's like the yeah. spaghetti strap stuff, but it's like, it's all the same. And so I think mm -hmm. education is, is key, but also yeah. making sure that they bring extras just in case they do show up with right. that sort of thing. Yeah. So I, I definitely link, you know, prior to our shoot, I link them print Pinterest boards, like styling ideas, hair ideas, um, nail ideas, like anything and everything, just to give them tips. Some girls look at it. I know some don't, and that's totally fine. It's just, you know, it really, as much effort that they were going to put in, it's going to show in their pictures. Yeah. So if they, not that they don't care, but if they don't put in, you know, a little bit of extra time and take care of those small details. It's not going to register obviously in camera. There's only so much I can do. Um, you know, and some girls come in and they have pretty good outfits, but then I'll piece them with different styling stuff that I have here at the studio, you know, whether it's like a cool body chain or an arm cuff or cool, you know, jewelry, bracelets, hats, but overall clothes, you know, 99% of the time it's their stuff they're bringing. Now, if it's like a model shoot or something like that, that we're doing like for an agency, I usually style all of that myself. Yeah. That's at your favorite stuff. store. Zara. Yeah. It's there, so funny because people Snapchat me all the time and send me DMs and they're like, look where we are. <laughs> that's literally, that's every time I pass a Zara, I was like, this is Tara's store just because yeah. that's so kind of your style. I love yeah. it. Yeah. But it's funny because my clients, like my regular day in, day out clients, like my seniors, they don't shop there. Never wear. Well, yeah. What's funny though is I had a girl recently that came, every outfit was Zara and I was like, oh, that, those are like the clients that you wish you could like put like a, is there like oh, a yeah. client in a box thing where you could just like take it with you and yes yeah. totally yeah I have a handful that I'm like okay so I'm decent at styling but you need to come to every shoe and help me plan everything because they're they just have that gift you know what I mean yeah. they're very into the fashion and it shows oh absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. so um kind of going off that you said that if it was like a model shoot or anything like yeah. that you've been working with some agency models lately so how did you get into that and kind of what was your I guess, ultimate goal with working with these sign models and agencies? Yeah. Um, well, I actually got inspiration or even kind of thought about that or put that on my radar from Nicole Cook, my friend yeah. Nicole. And so she works with some agencies up in Sacramento. And to be honest, I think I was just too chicken. And, you know, when you're doing what's called a trade or like a trade for pictures, trade for digitals. Like a test shoot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like a test shoot. It's a collaboration. So most of the time, at least, you know, because I haven't been doing it that long, you know, it's just a trade. So everybody kind of comes and lends their craft, whether that be the model, the makeup artist, um, you know, if you're able to bring in a stylist, the photographer, obviously, and everybody just collaborates together and works for free. So that's kind of the downside. The downside is there's no monetary value, so to speak, on that actual shoot itself. Um, but, you know, obviously it can bring you in revenue in other ways. Um, but yeah, so I finally just, you know, after Nicole had talked to me and said, why don't you just reach out and what's it going to, you know, what do you have to lose? The worst they're going to do is say no, or we're not interested or whatever and go on to somebody else. So every time I was with Nicole, you know, we would set up a shoot with girls out in Sacramento and have so much fun. I was like, oh, this is so cool. And we can, you know, there's not really the pressure of a client. Yeah. You can be more creative and try new things where, you know, hopefully you all try new things, you know, when you're with clients a little bit within reason, but I feel like you have to also be able to deliver so you can't yep. go you have to get the safe stuff first so it's not all play yeah exactly yeah but i mean you should definitely play a little bit for yourself like 
not to name drop, but like True, True is amazing at that, True more, or True Creative Portraits, you know, she always has something creative that she ends at the end. Um, I usually don't think that far in advance or like, you know, bring props and stuff. So I just hope um, we're still shooting when the light's still up. So right? yeah. yeah, I'm just like, I need to get what I'm doing done or, you know, and mine usually for creative would be like a little bit different styling or make, maybe a little edgier makeup or a poppy lip. Like to me, that's kind of my creative take, not necessarily like, you know, props or tool or flowers, things like that. So it's just a whole different kind of a mix. Um, but yeah, so I reached out to some agencies and one of the first ones, you know, I reached out to, I'd actually photographed a girl's modeling pictures so she could submit them to that, to that agency. So of course they were like, oh, well, we know so-and-so and you did her pictures and we signed her and we love your work. Yeah, we'd love to work with you. And of course I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. So they sent me some names and, you know, I started doing creative shoots and, you know, even just stuff like playing in the studio and playing with lighting. And, you know, I have this great studio that I never utilize and I never play with. And that gives me time to like, try something new and my makeup artist to try something new. And, you know, even just having somebody that you don't really have to think about posing so much, you know, that's what the models, you know, expertise is on is that they know how to move and they're practicing their angles and their movements. So yeah, it's been, it's been super fun to kind of do that and do something a little different. Yeah. And I think the only time you ever use a studio is when Thomas oh, and I come to town and then we uh, make it even better than it was before. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, so Sean and Thomas, they're so sweet. They came and reached out and they're like, Hey, we're going to be in LA. We'd love to meet you. So they came to my studio. And of course, because I'm such a giver, I let them borrow some of my stuff. Mind you, they broke two of my receivers, my pocket wizard. They broke my background chain. Yeah. So they're pretty much not allowed in my studio ever without like a disclaimer and like a liability waiver. <laughs> yeah, we spent liability waivers when we visit Tara now. Yeah, right? I'm like, oh, okay, you're coming to town. Oh, darn it, I'm out of, I'm out of town that week. Oh, Whichever crap. Week. The studio, <laughs> the doors won't open. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, kind of going off the, the editorial kind of model mm -hmm. stuff, where do you yeah. draw your inspiration from? Because it's very much not senior-based. It's, it's yeah. different than what other senior photographers do. And I think that's a way that you've worked to differentiate yourself, not only just not in your local community, but also kind of yeah. industry and, uh, and nationwide. Well, as hard as it is, and you know, everybody's on social media, everybody has a phone, we all look for stuff for inspiration. And even though I have a lot of amazing, talented photographer friends in the, you know, photo, you know, senior photo industry, I try really hard not to constantly look at everybody else's stuff because I feel like you get stuck in this bubble and, you know, my work looks like Sean and then my work looks like Thomas's and then my, you know, and it just bounces off all of the, the main kind of people whose work is always out there and kind of in the forefront and you start to blend it together and it all starts to look the same. So I kind of do the same thing that I did back at art school and I still get magazines and that's really what I look at is magazines, stores, Zara, like I look at their editorial campaigns, um, you know, even like makeup artists, like there's some amazing beauty photographers and I look at like their makeup, um, things like that. Just anything that's outside of the senior field, but still photo related. Like I love looking at celebrity photographers and there's so many that are ugh, so amazing with styling and the lighting and location. And I mean, everything posing, you know, like kind of that effortless pose, effortless, effortless, effortless posing, posing, yeah. where they just look, they just look cool. And like, you know, they were prompted in some you know, respect, but yeah. it just looks very effortless, but still so polished. So that's kind of what I look for. I don't want to look at my best friends and do what they're doing as beautiful as it might be. Cause that's not true to me. And it's, you know, I don't want to be a copycat of anybody else. You know, I want to kind of have my own unique style and, you know, inspire others, but hopefully other people will see my work, be inspired and draw something from it, but not try to copy it because yeah. it's not them. You know, there's only one me, there's only one you. So I feel we can all kind of do our own twist on it. Absolutely. And then kind of going alongside that is you've also kind of worked to educate yourself from people outside the industry. So I think yeah. it was back in what April or May when you went to London, you actually did a mentorship yeah. with another photographer. So yeah. what prompted you to reach out to somebody that wasn't in the senior industry, kind of a field that was somewhat unrelated to the senior yeah. industry as a whole? Well, that was exactly my goal is it wasn't senior. Like to me, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I think differently, but to me, it was a no brainer. Like I don't want to go and learn, you know, lighting and posing and styling from somebody in my same field. And not that I, don't, I just want it to be different and it doesn't have to be distinctly different, but different enough that it doesn't look like I'm a clone of anybody else. And plus I feel like, especially in the fashion industry, you know, there are so many people that, you know, they pay thousands of dollars for stylists and thousands of dollars in educating what the new best trend is. So why am I going to go out there and try to figure it out in the senior industry when somebody 
in a much higher level is out there and paying and doing it already for me. So like I said, looking at those other, you know, fashion campaigns, learning from a fashion photographer, um, you know, even though I don't plan on shooting any beauty, like commercial beauty photography, but I look at some of those and just their lighting, their attention to detail. Um, I even show it to my makeup artists like, Hey, let's try this a little bit on our next model shoot, you know, just something. So it's different. And, you know, I still love going to conferences and, you know, te you know, teaching at the conferences, working with friends and like bouncing ideas off of one another. But I don't think that we should try to like only stick within that little small bubble. I think it's better if you reach out, go somewhere else, you know, and I learned a lot from that other photographer that was in London. Her name's Rosella. She's amazing. She shoots for like Allure and Marie Claire, stuff Absolutely. like that. So, you know, that was the genre that, I mean, I will never be a fashion photographer. And if an actual fashion photographer saw my stuff, they'd be like, please. Yeah. But it's like, it's my twist on bringing fashion into a senior market. If that Absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's, I think you hit it right on the head. I think it's finding that balance where yeah. you have to do what works in your industry, but also at the right. same time, you yeah. need to push yourself and kind of step out of those boundaries a little bit. Right. Otherwise, everybody's going to look the same yeah. after a while. And yeah. And I think, you know, now too, that I, you know, have gotten a little bit more established and clients come to me from different areas, you know, that's kind of what I'm known for. And some girls, I feel like they don't stress as much about outfits because I know I'm going to help them just because they've seen their friends or, you know, I mean, girls talk, boys talk, you know, if they go somewhere and say, oh, how was your shoot with Tara? And, you know, how was your styling? Or, you know, what did you wear? How'd you decide? And I mean, I've even seen in group chats where girl, you know, I'm in the messages and they'll say, oh, Tara's going to totally help you put it together. Like bring some of your favorite pieces and she'll, she'll make it work. Or I give them my cell phone number. And if they're super stressed about it, I say, you know what, put on an outfit or just lay it out. Like what you're thinking with your accessories, your shoes, whatever, snap a pic and send it to me, yep. you know, make a special album on your phone. If you put on a super cute outfit, even if it's, you know, months away from your photo shoot, start adding your, your album or adding pictures to that album. Then when it gets time to your photo shoot, you can look it up and go, Oh wait, these are the 10 pictures that I tagged. I only need five. Let's bring it all. And Tara can kind of, you know, maybe I'll put this piece with this piece that you never would have thought, but for pictures, you put it together and it looks incredible. I mean, even if you look at something like Teen Vogue and the Disney channel, I mean, I'm kind of known for like colors and patterns which a lot of my friends run away from. Yeah. But you're like the mix and match pattern. Yeah, girl. I love mix and match, mix and match patterns and textures. But if you watch like Disney channel, if you watch something like gossip girl and pretty little liars, you watch how they like blend textures and fabrics or, you know, have a killer pattern skirt and crazy tights, like stuff that you wouldn't probably wear to school, but photographically, yeah. I mean, it looks like something that a cool stylist would have put together. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's a great tip because I do the exact same thing with my clients where I tell them, lay out the outfits on the floor just so mm -hmm. I can get a visual idea mm -hmm. for how the stuff is going together because sometimes what they think in their head will look amazing and photographically. It's yeah. like you said the exact yeah. same thing. It's like yeah. it, it will look the same up from top down, so you need that kind of variety. Yeah. So yeah. I actually requi almost require my girls to send me five to six images of outfits yeah. just so I can see how they look. Yeah. Well, and I feel like that really helps me with location too. It does. Because I can't even tell you how many people come to, hold on, can you hold on one second? Yeah, for sure. There's somebody here for, there's somebody here for a pickup. Ooh. I actually have customers that walk in, so shoot. <laughs> here, will you text her really quick? I'm here with my assistant. Hold on. Will you text her and just tell her, yes, I'm here. Um, and I can hear her brother. Real saying, life happening right now. Real life, right here. Um, but there actually also, runs a business, so. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it helps me with location because I have girls that are like, oh, I want to shoot in a beautiful field and I want greenery and I want this and this. And I look at their outfits and I'm like, and it's the exact opposite. Uh, no. I'm like, first of all, if you're in a field, there's no way you're going to see those killer shoes that you have on that you style your whole shoot around those shoes. So if you're in a field with brush up to your belly, yep. you know, you're never going to see it. And just like, you can see like a disconnect, like a lot of Zara stuff, for instance, it's very like tailored and polished and kind of like statement pieces. They look so much better urban and yep. urban doesn't have to mean like dirty and graffiti. And that's what a lot of people think of when they see urban. I prefer like, no, like cool, like cityscape and that's um, what I guess, like, I, color. And yeah. that's why I, th I think like people, tr when they think urban, they're always like, Oh, I need to find like grungy locations. Like yeah. my favorite urban locations are like the high end urban locations. Yeah. Like the, the glass, the yeah. white yeah. cement. Yeah. Concrete. I mean, yeah. I love like mixed up textured concrete. You know yeah. what I mean? And people see it and they're like, Oh, that photograph's so cool. You know, just different tones of grays and whites and, you know, stuff like that. And even like blacks mixed in with like specks and stuff. Yeah. And that that's going to make her like bounce right off the picture, especially if she's in a colorful outfit. Like there's nothing distracting from it. It's just going to leap out at you, you know? And yeah. I feel oh, like nature, it's nature's beautiful, but there's only so much you can do without 
anything to lean against, no tree, you know, yep. nothing but a tree, you know, there's nothing to like kind of change your angles and do creative posing. There's no stairs, you know, and depending, you know, if there's no even like tree stumps that are knocked over, you know, it's either like sitting on your booty or squatting down or standing yep. up next to a tree. And that's so why I, I think like photographers, right. I think photographers that shoot a lot of nature stuff are yeah. almost better posers than, than people. Yeah, for sure. They have to be more creative. They have to think about yeah. how are they going to manipulate the poses so that it's not all the same, like one, two poses throughout their yeah. entire session if there's nothing to work with. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. But my favorite thing is like the girls who are like, oh, I want a nature shirt, but I have these real uh, shoot. I but I have these really cool, cool cute shoes, and it's like, yeah. well, you're not going to see them because you're going to be standing in like two feet tall grass. So exactly. it's like, good luck. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I have girls. You know, obviously, we try to pre-plan their shoot as much as I, you know, as much as we can. But sometimes we get here and I see their makeup and I see you know what they have inspiring for you know or their uh, inspiration for hair and their inspiration for clothes, and I'm like. Yeah. It's, it's just not clicking. Like there's a disconnect. Can you make it work? Absolutely. Is there five better options? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I definitely don't want to completely change their mind. Like if they're dead set on something, but I definitely feel like it's also my job to educate them and say, Hey, you know what? It's going to look better this way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and kind of going off that, at least I know I do, but are you using those outfits to plan that location around them based on yeah. color schemes and yeah. lighting and that sort of thing? Yep. So when they bring their outfits, it's more to educate me to go, okay, this is going to photograph really cool at this particular area. Okay. Um, I really wanted that white wall, but this white outfit, that's not going to happen there. Or maybe it's going to look cool and be like that color on color or, yep. you know, like a yellow on a yellow, things like that. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, it ain't going to work at all. Can we fudge it and kind of fake it? Yeah. Probably, but if there's yeah. a better option. I'm sure as heck going to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so what would a piece of advice would you give photographers that maybe are in an, an area where it's like, they don't have the amazing locations like you do. Cause it's like, you can drive 45 minutes and be in Santa Monica and Venice. Okay. You know what? Here's the thing. I totally agree with that. I do agree that I'm spoiled. I totally get it. But there are so many locations. I feel like people, especially if they're not photographers. Okay. So they look at this, right? They look at all of this you really need this. So if you can like hone it in and be like, okay, this spot, you have one person you're photographing one, you can take this one little sliver of something and make it look amazing. Yeah. Um, which it's in my hallway. So I'm not going to go grab it, but I have a canvas in my hallway and it's this girl in nature and people think it's snow. And when I tell them that it's actually like in the middle of the hood and she's leaning on like this rock, it's all covered in toilet paper that has dried and crusted in the background. It is not, <laughs> my friend's going to look at it. It is dried and crusted toilet it. paper. I need to see this photo. Tell her to rip the canvas off your wall. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yeah, I was like, we need to see this photo. <laughs> okay. Can you even see it? Oh, that's one of my favorite photos of yours. Yeah, look at the pretty, yeah. I'm totally ruining this for everybody. My client's going to be like, wait, you were supposed to tell me, this is all toilet paper, guys. Not that I'm going to take you and put you like in a place that somebody uses as a toilet. Kara you know, will actually do that. At a party. Me. But yeah, that's all toilet paper. I love that image too. And I did not provide, I did not litter. That was there organically. <laughs> I, I think that just, that comes down to like, one, knowing your lighting but also yeah. knowing what colors you're going to pull from those locations. And it's like, right. I mean, we're all shooting at like one, eight, two, eight. And yeah. so it's like, we're going to blow half that stuff out in the background. Yeah. You're not going to see yeah. 15 feet past them. Yeah. And the other thing I tell my clients that most of them don't think about it to me, lighting trumps location every day of the week, 24 seven. Yep. So, you know, bless their hearts. Some people come and they're like, Oh, there's this really pretty place that I want to photograph. And it's so pretty. And just because it's pretty to your eye doesn't mean it's going to photograph. You know, if you have a girl and she wants to be photographed by a lake, you know, or this cool like blue sky, you know, you have to shoot at full sun to get that blue sky. You can't do backlit and blue sky in one. I mean, you can. You can in LA, LA, but. <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's only certain things. We're not magicians. We certainly try and we can do a lot of cool stuff in Photoshop. But I think also because I am old school, I come from like getting it right in camera. Yep. Not that I can't crop and fix stuff in Photoshop and kind of going back to those pop-up questions you were asking me. I want to tweak stuff a little bit in Photoshop and then fix little blemishes and stray hair, or I mean in Lightroom and fix little tiny stuff. You know, if, but I believe like if there's something in my way, I'm going to walk over, I'm going to move it out of my way and then shoot. Yeah. Can I get rid of it in post? Yeah, but why waste the time? Why retouch 20 pictures when I can move it in five seconds? 
So absolutely. Yeah. And I think it comes down to, it's like you said, white trumps everything. It's like a lot of times I'll have clients where in the Northwest we're blessed yeah. with a ton of like beautiful forests, but yeah. it's like, if I try shooting in a forest, I know one, it's going to be really, really flat, poor lighting. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I try to gear those, uh, steer those clients away mm-hmm. from almost educating them. Right. So we can shoot here, but your photos aren't going to look like what's in my portfolio because it's not the yeah. lighting that you're used to, but mm-hmm. they just don't yeah. think about it. They see yeah. beautiful trees and they're like a beautiful path and they say, oh, it'll be beautiful for fo- photos too. Yep. Yep. I know. I had this girl that wanted to shoot like on top of this one cliff or this one walkway up to this cliff. It was so dark. I mean, we took a couple and then even when she saw them, she's like, oh, I don't like them. Yep. You know, or I don't like them as much as these other ones that was, you know, a different idea where the lighting was pretty, you know. And so part of that is kind of educating them usually, usually after the fact, like after they actually see it at their session, they're like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Or, oh, I never thought of that. And another thing, too, you know, we are portrait photographers, which means you kind of, you know, want to see the person's face, even though you want to, you know, obviously have creative stuff and have, you know, backgrounds and cool things. But if you're going to photograph this giant, like, you know, lake or mountainside, the person's going to be this big. You know what I mean? It's not really going to be a portrait. You know, that's fine to like yeah, make you blow it up to like a 40 by 60 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And when they realize like, hey, to get the palm trees in the picture on Rodeo Drive, you're going to be itty bitty bitty. Yep. So yeah, just different things that they don't think about. They just think like, oh, I want this city look. You know, we can rock that city look, but you're only going to have like one or two where you're going to see the whole palm tree. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, we're going to end with like one last question. And that's okay. if for maybe the photographers that are struggling with maybe finding those right locations or um, mixing that, that wardrobe with location or styling, yeah. that sort of thing. What's like one piece of advice that you would give them? Go for it. Just do it anyway. You know what I mean? It's all about like pushing your boundaries. Try it anyway. If it sucks, oh, well, you know what I mean? Try something different the next time. And I think just doing it a little at a time, or even like, I know a lot of people get stuck up on posing. So go get yourself a Teen Vogue, go get yourself a free people or anthropology catalog, you know, something that's inspiring to you, or, you know, look at Zara, one of my favorites, and find a pose and find a way to incorporate that into your session. Even just one pose, as silly as it sounds. And you'll find like after each shoot, if you just do this extra pose and then this extra pose and this extra pose, you'll start to kind of build your own little blend of styles and poses and things that are a little bit different. And stuff that even seems unposed, like I love the unposed pose or things that you are taught maybe you shouldn't do with girls. Like girls shouldn't sit with their knees open. Well, if you do it right or, you know, you have their hand in their lap or, you know, have it pretty, it totally works. And it looks very fashiony because it's not something, you know, that you would do in a portrait. Totally works. So, yeah, I just say go for it. If it doesn't work, try it again. Try it differently. Tweak it here and there. It's all about trying it. You can have ideas in your head, but until you actually try out and implement them, it's not going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to end. You get to ask the audience and the people watching one question. It can be photo related, not photo related, but I'll give you a second to think about it. Um, okay. In the meantime, if you guys are joining us on Real Talk, we're super excited to have you here. We're going to actually be putting these episodes out the entire year with amazing guests, uh, guests on like Tara. Um, so be sure to, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button down below. We'll be posting these um, about every month. Yeah, Tara's pointing to it. Just follow Tara's fingers and we'll, and we'll do that. Um, if you guys are watching on the Senior Style Guide blog, make sure to keep an update. Uh, check out that monthly just because we'll be updating that too. Um, but we'll end. Where can people find you on, say, Instagram, maybe your website if they want to check out your rad sure. new website? Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's not, it's, it's not as rad yet. It's being, I'm having a new one created. Thank goodness. I'm doing a whole brand overhaul, but it's not quite there yet. Um, so yeah, you can find me at tararochelle.com. And on Instagram, you can find me at Tara Rochelle photo. Awesome. And what's the one question you want to ask people today? Okay. So my new favorite show ever is Riverdale. Cause I'm, you know, in my forties, but I like to watch teen movies. Hey, maybe yeah. that's where I get my inspiration for styling too. Probably you know? what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for the girls out there, would you be more of a Betty or more of a Veronica? That's my question. Betty or Veronica. I have no yeah. clue who either of them are. So, so Sean, you need to binge watch some Netflix this weekend. Yeah. Check out who they are. All the cool kids are doing it, Sean. I think I'm, I'm getting caught up on Master of None right now. So that's what I'm, it's a Z's yeah, new show. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I dig so it. another tip for people, if they want to watch a kind of a comedy real life scenario type show, All right. Master cool. of None right. is on Netflix. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for taking some time out of your day and Absolutely. the business and all that stuff. But we're super excited to have you on here. And thank you again for joining us. 
You're very welcome. Thanks, Sean. We'll see you guys on the next episode.